Hello viewers, today we shall discuss infantile esotropia which is esotropia that is present by 6 months of age. The prevalence is reported to range from 1 in 403 live births to as high as 1 in 50 of all newborn children. There are two theories of pathogenesis. Worth believed that it was prim a primarily sensory phenomenon due to an irreversible defect in the brain's ability to fuse and therefore believing that restoring binocularity is impossible. Chavez, on the other hand, believed that the strabismus was, was a result of a motor problem and that binocular vision can be normalized if the deviation was eliminated during infancy. Recent evidence supports this theory. Infantile esotropia can run in families and appears to be a manifestation of a multifactorial gene involvement. Monofixation syndrome has been noted to be much more common in the first degree relatives of patients with infantile esotropia and Diane et al found a possible involvement of the AH1 gene in the pathology of infantile esotropia. Coming to the clinical features, the esotropia is comitant and typically greater than 30 prism diopters. Extraocular movements are normal and hyperopia is the usual for that age as demonstrated by cycloplegic refraction. Patients often have equal uh, vision in which case the child has alternate fixation or commonly cross fixation. This is alternating fixation with the left eye fixing and with the right eye fixing. Cross fixation means the child fixes with the right eye for objects in the left visual field and with the left eye for objects in the right visual field. If vision is equal, then alternation of fixation takes place at the midline. There is no need to abduct the eyes and there is an apparent bilateral abduction deficiency mimicking bilateral abducens palsy. Fixation preference is seen if amblyopia is present. The sound eye will maintain fixation into abduction and the amblyopic eye will appear to have abduction deficit. The presence of abduction can be demonstrated by the doll's uh, head maneuver or by observation after patching either of the patient's eyes. Spinning the child to demonstrate abduction by the vestibular ocular reflex may also be done. So we have just talked about apparent abduction deficit and fixation preference. Dissociated strabismus develops after about one to two years of life. It is most commonly of the vertical variety. DVD is char characterized by, by updrift, sometimes with extortion of the eye when under cover or spontaneously during periods of visual inattention. When the cover is removed, the affected eye will move down without a corresponding down drift of the other eye and is usually bilateral. Inferior oblique overaction usually manifests after one to two years. Horizontal smooth pursuit on monocular viewing is normally asymmetrical in that up to the age of 6 months the pursuit from nasal to temporal is less well developed. However, interruption of the binocular fusion such as in infantile esotropia can result in this condition persisting lifelong despite surgery. It is usually tested by testing for optokinetic nystagmus. Latent nystagmus is seen only when one eye is covered and the fast phase beats towards the side of the fixing eye. This means that the direction of the fast phase reverses according to which eye is covered. Manifest latent nystagmus is the same except that nystagmus is present with both eyes open but the amplitude increases when one is covered. 
Pattern strabismus may also be seen with the V pattern more common due to inferior oblique overaction. The overaction may be asymmetrical and this finding in addition to fixation preference is a strong indicator for the presence of amblyopia especially in the eye with greater inferior oblique overaction. Ciancia syndrome is simply a severe form of infantile esotropia with the esotropia greater than 50 prism diopters, presence of abducting nystagmus and abduction deficits. These children usually cross fixate. Uh, for evaluation of full history including antenatal, birth history, family history, photos, infantile esotropia is more common in children born prematurely and in those with neurological disorders. A complete examination includes squint evaluation and cycloplegic refraction. Uh, presence of fixation preference indicates the presence of amblyopia and this can be tested by the 10 prism diopter vertical prism test or induced tropia test. Coming to the differential diagnosis, pseudoesotropia can occur due to a wide nasal bridge, prominent epicanthal folds, small interpupillary distance and negative angle kappa. All of these can be ruled out by examination. Sensory isotropia, there will be poor vision in one eye and examination will show the cause. Sixth nerve palsy, there will be no abduction on doll's head maneuver. Patients with isotropic duanes will have abnormal face turn, incompetence and narrowing of palpable fissure of the affected eye on adduction. In addition, the force duction will be positive. Accommodative esotropia often is acquired after 6 months of age, is intermittent, the hyperopia is usually greater than 3 diopters and esotropia responds to cycloplegic correction. In congenital fibrosis of the extraocular muscles, there are poor ductions especially in upgaze and ptosis is very frequently seen. Mobius syndrome, there is a large angle esotropia with cross fixation and this can mimic infantile esotropia. Tight medial recti can be discerned on force duction testing and there will be evidence of unilateral or bilateral facial palsy in addition to other congenital abnormalities. Medial wall orbital fracture, there will be a history of trauma, incompetence, abnormal head posture and a positive force duction test. Nystagmus blockage syndrome Patients with nystagmus blockage syndrome will have moderate to large amounts of manifest nystagmus and be orthotropic when inattentive but will have variable esotropia and mild nystagmus when attentive. Uh, observing the patient for pupillary constriction during the esotropic phase may be helpful in making this diagnosis. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from AP's Ophthalmology Pearls. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.